right, next Friday, it is the NHL trade deadline. It's Dave Panyota's time to shine. He's our NHL Network insider. Well, you shine year-round, but you really sparkle coming up next Friday. As we mentioned, the deadline is next Friday. Uh, Dave, how likely is it that we see the Flyers trade away players before then, even though they're in a playoff spot right now? Yeah, j -Mo, it, it's looking more and more likely that the Philadelphia Flyers are going to be leaning towards moving uh, Sean Walker and or Nick Sealer from their back end. And even with an injury to Jamie Drysdale, uh, that shoulder injury, it's putting him out a few weeks, it, it's not going to affect or deviate their plan. If they get the right pieces in place and they're asking for a first-round pick for Walker, maybe it expands a little bit more if both Walker and Sealer are both in the mix. But so far, they haven't been able to get anywhere on a contract with either guy. I mean, first of all, they haven't really initiated contract negotiations with Walker's camp. Uh, they've started things with Nick Sealer, but the ask, I'm told, is a four-year contract, over $3 million per season. That hasn't been received overly uh, well, at least for now, from Philadelphia's side of things. So they're exploring the marketplace on both of these players. As I mentioned, some teams are looking at both. I believe Dallas potentially one of them. Uh, and some teams are looking at individuals to see if they can maybe have a better fit there. But if contract negotiations don't pick up on Walker's side, and it doesn't sound like it's going to get there, Talking to some other managers around the league, they seem to be of the belief that Walker's going to be on the move, and it might be sooner than later. This one might actually open up the defensive market as everybody else is waiting to see what Calgary does with their guys. All right, we know Philly's uh, dealing with some injuries right now. Speaking of injuries, the Stars announced yesterday, Tyler Sagan, he's out week to week with an injury. How does that injury impact them now approaching the trade deadline? Well, the Dallas Stars have already been very aggressive, J-Mo, in trying to add to their blue line. Chris Tanev at the top of their list in terms of who they'd like to add uh, ahead of the deadline. They've spoken, as I mentioned, with uh, Philadelphia about Walker and Sealer. Uh, and as well, another player on that defensive side, uh, Matt Gumba with Arizona. So they're exploring a variety of different options. And they're willing to give up a first-round pick for the right deal. They feel their window is now. They've got a little bit of cap space right now. But the real thing is what happens with Tyler Sagan and his injury if it's serious enough and i'm hearing the timeline for his potential return is in and around the end of the regular season if that extends and they're going to continue to monitor this and reevaluate his situation i believe later this week but if he is out until the end of the regular season that opens up an additional 9.85 million in cap space for jim nil to go spend and he's been given the green light my understanding to spend it's just a matter of finding the right deals in place to add to this group. But Dallas is definitely going to be a team to watch. They have been already trying to add a right shot defenseman. If Sagan is done for the regular season and comes back for playoff time, it changes the landscape potentially of the entire deadline, making Dallas a real player for someone up front as well. That's a lot of money to make some big moves. Uh, speaking of that, the Golden Knights recently lost Mark Stone to injury. What do you think the timetable on him is? Is that more of an end of the regular season playoff type thing, LTIR? And if so, how do they? Uh, who do they target out there that can kind of fill the void of their captain being out right now? Yeah, very similar situation to what's happening with the Dallas Stars and, and Tyler Sagan. Uh, for them right now, we know that Jack Eichel is skating. He's going to be coming back at some point soon. Once he does return, my understanding, he'll come off LTIR. Mark Stone will be placed on it to offset, uh, obviously, the dollars. If that or when that does happen, it's, it's looking like in and around mid to end of April for a timeline for Mark Stone. If it is end of April, that puts him into playoff territory. And that puts the Vegas Golden Knights into a cushion of just over $5 million in available cap space on LTIR that they can go out and spend. Kelly McCrimmon and his staff and the Vegas Golden Knights here in Toronto tonight, they are already looking. They're already exploring their options to see what is available out there. They've already had some conversations with respect to potentially bringing back Riley Smith from Pittsburgh. Uh, they've also poked around on his teammate, Jake Gensel. And he would certainly be the prized possession for any team up front in terms of the rental market. But Vegas, never afraid to go after the big boys and never afraid to make a splash ahead of the deadline. Gensel would certainly be one heck of an ad for them. They proved last season they're not afraid to make some bold moves. They brought in Ivan Barbashev. He was very instrumental in that line uh, that helped push them over the edge. Uh, and this season. One of the big boys, or at least the big names out there that we're hearing is on the market right now, UC Soros. Nashville also in a playoff spot right now. Uh, what do you think the Predators do? And what are their plans for their goalie? 
Yeah, this is an interesting one because they're in, smack in the playoff race. They're in the hunt with respect to uh, the wild card position in the West. But they're listening. They're very much listening on UC Soros and what could potentially be brought uh, brought in for them. They really like Askarov down in the AHL. My understanding is that if they don't move UC Soros ahead of the deadline, they're, they're, the chances are very strong that they potentially move him around summertime and shift the goaltending uh, uh, platform in Nashville to Askarov. UC Soros has one more year left on his contract. He's looking for a big ticket, I'm told, over $8 million a year on his next deal. That doesn't seem like something that Nashville wants to get into. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they navigate this. If they don't get the right offer in place by the deadline, expect to hear UC Soros' name in the summer. Barry Trotz and his staff will try to maximize the return now. Otherwise, it could be very juicy around draft time. Ooh, juicy Soros. I see what you did there. All right, time is ticking, and uh, we don't have much movement just yet, but we know if there is, you'll, of course, bring it to us. Dave Pignotto, we appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. You got it. Thanks.